Hi, I'm Sophie from Encodian, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can input an array of images into a Word template using Encodian Flower's Populate Word Action. So let's take a look at the solution. So for the solution today, I've got an inspection power app. So the inspector can load up the power app on their phone when they're on site. They can complete the inspection, they can give a grade, and they can upload or take pictures of anything that needs to go against the inspection. So I've got two Dataverse tables driving this in the back end. My first Dataverse table is my inspections table, which we can see here. And for this, I've just got my name column. And then I've added in the sites, which is an option set. And I've already preloaded four different sites here. So the inspector can choose where they are. I've got an option set for safety grade. So this is either going to be safe or unsafe. And then I've got a text area box for reviewer comments. My second table I have is called inspection images. And I've separated this out into another table because there can be multiple images relating to one inspection. So for this table, I've got the name as the primary column. I've got an image field. I've got an inspection field, which is a lookup to the inspection table. And again, I've got a text area field where any comments relating to the picture can be added. So this is the data in the back end. So let's take a look at the Power App. So this is my site inspection Power App. So it's a simple Power App that allows the inspector to view previous site inspections and also to create new ones. So let's go ahead and create a new inspection. So this is my site drop down. So this is the four site names I'd already preloaded into that option set field. Safety grade, I can choose from unsafe or safe. Then I'm just going to leave some comments here. So when I click save, this is then going to submit this form. So it's going to save a new row in my inspections table in Dataverse. And it's also going to bring me to my pictures area here. So this is where the inspector can either upload images or take images, depending on how they want to do the inspection. So because I'm currently filming using my webcam, I can't actually use the take image option here today. However, I've put on the screen at the moment some screenshots of what this would look like. So the first screenshot that's appeared is what it looks like when you're just on the screen with the camera. And if you click the camera button, that's then going to capture the image and it's going to appear as a still image on top of the camera control. And you'll note in the second picture that the icon has now changed to the reset icon. So the inspector, if they're not happy with the image, they can then click the reset icon. It will reset the camera control and they can take another image. Or if they're happy with it, they can provide their comments as to what they're showing in the image and then hit save. So I can't show that live because PowerApps isn't going to like it because my camera is already in use. However, I can upload an image. So this looks very similar. However, instead of it being a camera input control, it's an upload control here. So I'm just going to go through and quickly upload three different images here so we can see what this looks like. Once my image is uploaded, I can add any comments. And when I click save, this is going to patch this image to my inspection images table. And it brings me back to this page here, which gives the inspector the opportunity to either upload another image or take another image. Or now that an image has been uploaded against this inspection, they can now just complete the inspection if they wanted to. So I'm just going to fast forward and upload a few more images. OK, I've uploaded all three of my images now. So now I'm going to complete the inspection. When the inspection is completed in the back end, this is going to run a Power Automate flow, which is going to gather all of the inspection data. So all of the data we inputted in the form and all of the images. And it's then going to use this to populate a site inspection word template. So now that has been clicked, that flow is going to run in the back end. And let's scroll down here and have a look at that the site inspection that we just added. So I'm going to open this up here. We can see all of the information has been inputted. And if you click through to images, we can see all three images have been added here too. So that is the Power App. So how has all of this been configured? 
But on the home page, I just have my header and footer. And this is just a gallery. Clicking the new inspection button will navigate to the new inspection screen, which just has an edit form again connecting to the inspections data table. So this is all kind of very standard out of the box with Power Apps. I have a save button here and on save, we are submitting the form and then we're navigating to the image screen. And this is what the image screen looks like as we saw before. So to start off here, we have our two buttons. We have our take image button. And when this is pressed, we're gonna be changing these two variables up here. So we're setting var take image to true because we want this to control our take image container. And we'll be setting var upload image to false because we want this to control our var upload image container. So we're setting these to true and false because this is going to be what the visibility settings of those containers are, as we'll see in a second. And similarly with upload image, with this time we're going to be setting var upload image to true. And then we're going to be setting the variable var take image to false. And also with these buttons, we have some formulas working on the visibility settings. So I've got an if statement here, which is checking to see if var take image or var upload image equals true. So if either one of these is true, it means one of the buttons must have been clicked. And we want the visibility to be false because we don't want to show these buttons when we're doing the stuff with the uploads. And this is the same visibility setting for the take image button too, because it doesn't matter if the upload image button was pressed, we still want to hide both buttons. So this is my take image screen. And as mentioned, when I did this in the demo, Power Apps isn't going to show you me because I'm currently filming using my webcam. So it's not happy about that. But essentially, this is where your camera and your image control are. So I've just overlaid the image on top of the camera so that when a photo is taken, you can't see the live camera underneath anymore. The image is laid on top and then you can either reset the image or keep it and save it. So when working with the camera control and you want to add a button to take a picture, you can do this using camera.stream. So on my camera icon, first, we're checking if it is the camera icon that's showing at the moment. If true, we're going to be setting a variable called var picture to camera.stream. So when you're using the camera control in Power Apps, you don't want to use camera.photo, you want to use camera.stream. And to be able to use this, if you come onto the camera settings here, you can go on to stream rate. And when you first add this in, your stream rate is going to be zero, but you can set it up to 100 or whatever rates that you may need. So in doing this, we can then access camera.stream. So whatever your stream is at the second you press the button, that is going to save into this var pictures variable. After var pictures has been populated, so we're checking this by checking if var pictures is blank, the icon is going to change to icon.reset. And when clicking the button, if we go back to on select, if icon does not equal icon.camera, we're going to be setting var pictures to blank. And that is how you can reset the image. Here we just have a text input for comments. And then on save, we're doing a patch. So we're patching back to inspection images. We're adding a new row, so we'll be using default inspection image. We're patching back that image using the context variable var picture. We need to link it back to the inspection that we just submitted. And we can do this using the last submit of the inspection form. So all you need to do is the name of your form dot last submit because it will be expecting a record value back, not a GUID. So you can leave it like this. And then the comments are just your text input box dot text. I'm also resetting the variables that we were using for those buttons that we had when we first got onto the page. So I'm resetting the var take image to false and var upload image to false. This is going to show those buttons again. And it's going to hide this container, which is containing all of this upload functionality. I'm then going to set var pictures to blank. So when you next come on the page, there's not going to be a picture already set in there. And I'm resetting the text input box too.
So I'm just going to click save here just to get our buttons back. For this button that appears after you've first uploaded an image, the visibility of this button is going to depend on a lookup. So it's going to be looking up into inspection images using the GUID from the last submit. If this is not blank and these containers are currently not visible, then this button will be shown. So lastly, let's have a look at the upload image page and see how this is working. So this is working in a very similar way to the take image. So we just have our image input control here. We have our comments box. And in the save here, we have the same patch back to inspection images. We're adding a new row again, so we're using defaults. And the only difference this time is our image is going to be our uploaded image dot image. So down the side here, when you add in your image upload control, it adds it in as a group where you have your add media button and your uploaded image, which is an image. So whatever this is called, you need to use in your save here. And then similarly, we're just resetting those variables back to false, resetting that add media button, and we are resetting the comments from this text input here. So I'm just going to click save again. And then lastly, coming back to the complete inspection button, the on select property of this is it's going to take the inspector back to the home screen. And then we're going to be running the create inspection document power automate. And we're going to be feeding in the GUID of the last submit. So we use that form dot last submit quite a lot. You could save that GUID into a variable if you prefer, but I've just kept writing it as the form dot last submit dot whatever if I need it or just form dot last submit if I need it as the whole record. So this is the Power Automate flow. So this is a manual triggered flow with the trigger being Power Apps V2. And we are feeding in the inspection GUID from the Power App. The first thing I'm doing in the flow is I'm initializing an array variable, which I've called image array. And this is going to store the details about each of the images uploaded for the given inspection. I'm then going to use get a row by ID into the inspections table using the inspections GUID that we pass into the flow to bring back the correct inspection that we've just completed. I'm also going to use list rows for the inspection images. And I'm going to filter this using the inspection field. So here I'm using underscore logical name of my inspection field in the inspection images table underscore value. And you need to do this when you're using lookup fields in list rows filters so that you can access the value of that field. And I'm just doing that equal to the inspection GUID. And this needs to be a list rows rather than a get row by ID because there can be multiple images relating to one inspection. Once I've listed my rows, I then need to use an apply to each where I'm going to be looping over each image related to the inspection. And I'm just going to be appending the details to an array variable. So I'm going to be appending the actual image itself. And I've got this called photo and I'm going to be uploading the photo comments as well. So the JSON key for this is just called comments. My next step is I'm going to compose my input JSON. Now, when you're using the populate Word document flower action, you input the data that you want to populate into your Word template as JSON, like we can see here. So before I go any further, I'm just going to show you the template that I'm using. So this is my Word template. When using the populate Word action, you just add in your tags into your template using free text. So you just type them out as you would type any other piece of text. So when inputting things like numbers and strings, it just looks like this with the opening crocodiles and the square brackets. Inside the square brackets is your tag name, and then you just need some closing crocodiles at the end. So this is the body of my template. So I'm using inspection name here. I'm using the created on date as well here. And when you're working with dates in your templates, you can format the date straight from your templates. So if I just added created on as it was in Power Automate, or if I even formatted it in Power Automate and didn't have the formatting here, it would input in the correct format. However, because it's a date, it would also input with the time of creation as well, whereas I only want it to be the date. So I'm going to add some formatting here. 
I'm adding in the overall safety grade and I've put this in bold, which means when this gets populated, whatever the grade is, is also going to appear in bold text. The overall inspection comments are going to go underneath it here too. Then I come onto my inspection images. So I have this in a table as well. And because I'm going to be looping over the images array, because there's going to be potentially more than one image, I need to use these for each statements. So when inputting your data into tables, you need to start your for each in your first column. So I've got for each, opening square bracket, X in image array. And the image array tag here has to match whatever your JSON key is that you're using for your image array. So I'll show you this when we go back into Power Automate. Once you've initialized the for each, because we're inputting an image in this column here, you need to add a text box. So I do have a text box here. I've just made the border invisible because I didn't want there to be a border around the inputted image. And then you would input your image like I've done here. So I've done it as image because we need to let the action know that an image is going to be inputted here. And then it's the opening square bracket because I've said X in image array up here. It's going to be x dot photo and it's going to be dot photo because when I built up my image array, my JSON key I'm using there is photo. So it's just important to keep that the same. And then I can close the square brackets. Like with the dates, how you can format the dates, you can also start to add image formatting straight from your template here. And I've just added keep ratio to make sure that the aspect ratio is the same for my images. And then you can close the tag. Then I move on to my second column, which is for comments. So here I've got X dot comments because when I was adding the photo comments to the image array, the JSON key here was called comments and then I can close that tag. And then because this is my last column in the row, I then just need to close the for each tag. So this is then going to populate this table row by row. So the most important thing when using the populate word action is that your tags here match your JSON key values here. So that is the key thing when using this action. You just need to make sure that everything matches. And similarly, when you're using a for each loop, you can see we've got photo and comments here. So I've got photo and comments. You just need to make sure it all matches. So once I've got my input JSON ready, I can then get the file content. So my template file and all of my output files are going to be saved to OneDrive today. So I'm going to be using the get file content OneDrive action. Then I can use the populate word document action. So I'm just using the file content from the action above to input my template file. And I'm using the outputs from that compose as my document data. And that's going to populate that word document with the data that we just inputted from the last inspection. Once you've populated your document, you then actually need to create this as a new file. So I'm saving this back into the same folder in OneDrive and I'm calling it the name of the inspection with today's date. And the file content is going to be the file content from the populate word document action. So this flow would have already run in the back end when I clicked the complete inspection button back in the power app when I did the demo. So if I just come to the OneDrive and give it a refresh, we can see this is the most up-to-date inspection. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. So we can see site inspection, sites three. So we can see it's for inspection number four. The date it was today. It's been marked as safe, very safe site. So we can see that all three images with the correct comments have been added back into the document. So hopefully the video today has shown you how you can start to work with arrays of images when using Encodium Flower's populate word action. So today we followed a site inspection app, but if you have any other scenario when you are collecting images in an array, or if you, like in the example today, have a table of images and you need to transfer relevant ones to a document, you can follow similar steps and adjust it to the needs of your solution. You can also start to convert these populated documents into PDF as well, using Encodium Flower's convert to PDF action. So if you have any questions about anything you've seen today, please leave me a comment down below or get in touch with us at Encodium. And as always, happy automating.